are back here with us, and I already quickly introduced to you Dr. Gerine de Vries. She's standing here next to me, and uh, we will hear uh, more about her talk, It's Not Easy Being Green. And um, perhaps you might have some questions. We would love for you to fill in some questions. There's a QR code below on your screen, so please go to that place. And um, uh, after the speech of Gerdien, which will take about 30 minutes, we will be back and we will um, talk about the Q&A uh, together with you yes. and with you at home. So please use the QR code to ask some questions. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Gerdien de Vries. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today because I think it's, uh, uh, it's good to be here on stage and to do something live. It's a bit different than normal, of course, because you are uh, over there and I'm here. Um, but I love to talk uh, to you about why it's not easy to be green. But you guys uh, online and all the people that, that uh, took part of this um, uh, event are, of course, already uh, sustainable. So you also have to, because before the break, you said that this might be a bit, bit demotivating, but it's not in my essence to be demotivating. It's in my essence to be motivating and to tell you a little bit more about the background of why some businesses might find it hard to become green. Uh, but of course, you are already green, so please let this... Uh, uh, be in your back of your heads. Um, first of all, uh, I was also already uh, shortly introduced, but I will introduce myself more properly now. Um, uh, I'm an associate professor here in Delft at the Faculty of Technology, Policy and Management. And that's actually the faculty where we also do a lot of um, research on uh, public administration, uh, economy, so a, a, a lot of the stuff that goes on beyond the technology. So we work together with the engineers on a lot of uh, socio-technical uh, uh, problems, technology, policy and management, of course that's in the name of the faculty. Um, so we work together with the other faculties in that sense. I'm also a scientific director of our energy transition lab. So at our faculty we have a lab that does dedicated work on the energy transition. So we also deal there with uh, technology and policy uh, er in and around the energy transition. But we also work on climate adaptation and also on energy efficiency, of course. Um, at the TU Delft, we also uh, founded a platform for social innovation because we wanted to show that besides technological innovation, the social part is also very important. You can, you can make the best things uh, and invent the best things that there are, but of course there must also be public, people that use it. Um, we also study the behavior of the engineers themselves and the policy makers. The whole system is very important. Therefore, we thought, okay, we need that social innovation platform as well. And um, yeah, to show you also that this part of uh, psychology and climate psychology is also important in the rest of the world, there is a platform from the International Energy Agency that is dedicated to behavioral insights and how they are implemented for policy making. And uh, we actually see that around the world, and the, the public, you, you are all from around the world, uh, we already see that behavioral insights becoming more and more um, important. And I will tell you a little bit more about that uh, during the presentation. Um, and yeah, as you already know, I was uh, called and I was mentioned as a climate psychologist. And actually that name raises a lot of questions all the time, because what is a climate psychologist? And actually, I was not a climate psychologist when I came here. I was branded climate psychologist by a newspaper once, and then the label was happily taken over by a lot of other people. So now I'm a climate psychologist, and I will tell you a little bit more what that is and how I interpret that. Climate psychology, so what is it? It's not the classic view on psychology. So a lot of people, when they hear psychologist, they think about this, like a, a person on a sofa uh, with problems and uh, someone else, the psychologist, the Freud type, that talks with this person to discuss the dreams and the problems of this person. And that's not what I do. So I'm not by training a clinical psychologist. So I don't uh, treat people with climate depression, for instance, because that's often being asked for me, do you treat people? And I say, no, it's not my type of work. There are clinical psychologists that do that type of work, um, but I'm a researcher and uh, I research people and I, I research pe the people, uh, the mind of people and the behavior. And I put it in this slide. This is a kind of a definition that I think uh, I do. Um, so what we actually do is we study uh, 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 normal people's behavior within energy and climate related issues. And uh, why this is important this is important because people and uh, how people think and what people do 
uh, it, they don't do that in a vacuum. It's part of the, the larger system. And when you look at bigger socio-technical problems or uh, even wicked problems, as climate change is, then you have to look at the whole system. So my colleagues who make the big models uh, at the faculty, who do the, the mathematical models, for instance, they are focused on this system. Um, and sometimes when they, for instance, do agent-based modeling, they also treat people and individuals in that system as zeros and ones. Uh, and then we, as psychologists, can say, okay, maybe um, the human being is a little bit more complicated than a zero or a one. And we have to take these perspectives from psychology and the knowledge that we have on how people think and how people behave uh, also into these models. So what we actually try to do is uh, create a system with all these uh, insights that we have from different scientific backgrounds and different scientific disciplines and mold that together in this system. And then we try to make sense of it and also we try to think, okay, how can we use this knowledge about people and technology and policies in this system to create, for instance, interventions, um, pol new policies, but also, of course, technology. So to give you an example, we work together in, in projects also within uh, our university with people from aerospace, and they're building these uh, amazing new technology and new innovations, all the things that you probably also um, uh, are doing now. You create and innovate technological new things that might uh, make the world better. Um, but of course, you also need to take into account that what you create and what you make is also accepted by people and also used by people. And also that it is not rejected by policies or regulations. So uh, we try to, to uh, help the engineers by creating this larger view on how the technology will be accepted and how the technology will be used. And actually what we found, what we actually also found very uh, interesting and funny, is we also uh, take a look at the engineers themselves and see that some of the engineers uh, have an optimism bias, which is in itself very good, because engineers need to be optimistic about their project, product and their projects. Um, so if you create something and you are uh, an innovator, of course you need to be enthusiastic about what you do. And it, of course you need to uh, think that everybody would like your product as well. And then we say, okay, maybe we can help you also see if your optimism is uh, uh, realistic. Um, are, are the things that you think about your project and your technology as people th also think it's uh, like the end users. So with aer aerospace, we have this project now on kite power. These are kites that generate electricity. Uh, there are demo projects, so it's not um, uh, that it's uh, uh, really out in the open yet, but there are demo projects. And we can actually go there and ask people, for instance, in the vicinity of such a pilot project, uh, how they um, experience these, th these, these kite powers in this sense, how, how they see the kites, uh, if they think that they make noise or not, if they like the colors, these kinds of things. So that is how um, we as uh, climate psychologists can cooperate with the engineers. And we can work together in these large projects to see, okay, how can we make the best uh, use of this technology and policies. So this is individuals within a system. Um, this is also really the view of the, the, the TU Delft climate psychology. If you go to other universities, it could be different, but we, we take this system approach. And it, it is relevant to um, include psychology in this larger uh, field of research because um, we can actually make policies of help making policies and technologies better. And that's also acknowledged in, uh, in, in other uh, organizations uh, throughout the world already. So we see also in the, in the, in the over the 10, 15 years that I do this work, that there's really an incline in interest also. There are really uh, more and more people, also funders, who are interested in this social part. And we also see that there's a large funding that we, that we need to get that often there, there need to be a paragraph on uh, social acceptance or, on, or the human side of a technology. Um, now that uh, I come to the part that, uh, that I promised to talk about, the barriers. And of course there are, um, uh, we talk about barriers, but barriers can also be facilitators. For some people, the things that make it difficult can make it for other people uh, less difficult. But I will focus on barriers because that's, I think, easier to explain. Um, let's we first start with the, the whole idea of a green business. So there might be different reasons, so these, these are actually the facilitators, to start a green business. So for you, uh, there might be all kinds of reasons to do that. So 
if you think about that from a psychological point of view, you could be intrinsically motivated to better the world and that you wanted to do something uh, green and sustainable because that's something that you find as a person important so that you also want that for your business. It could also be that from a business perspective, you think, okay, I can make a lot of money with a sustainable business. That's the reason why I do it. And it's, it doesn't really resonate with what I personally think, but okay, that could also be a reason. Um, it could be a reason to start a green business that you want to attract employees. And we see in, in, uh, in research also that young people might find it more and more important to work for a sustainable uh, employer. So that could be a reason that you also want a green business. And Take into mind, this could be a reason for uh, starting a green startup. So if you start at the beginning, but these motivations and con considerations are also for businesses that might not have started as green, but as great businesses that want to become green. And I think the barriers that we will go into uh, on the next slides might also be more important for those companies than maybe for you who already uh, are started, starting with the, the, the idea to start a green business. Um, so there, yeah, there could be more reasons, therefore I put on the slides also some open spaces because there can, can be a lot of reasons uh, for you to start a green business and also for great uh, businesses to become green. Uh, I put a here a, a news um, uh, snippet because I saw, the, I, I, I saw this two weeks ago, I think, that uh, this, the, the clean of the green tech is becoming more and more popular and that's also, I think, really a signal of the time, so it's interesting to notice that. So let's go to the barriers. Um, actually, this is a, a slide that I often use because we can put in the middle, in the middle white circle, all kinds of green behavior. In this case, it's a sustainable business, but it could also be uh, greening your own house or uh, the barriers that you come into if you want to stop riding a car um, and getting more green mobility, for instance. But in this case, let's zoom into the sustainable business. You, if you have the sustainable business, there can be all kinds of barriers um, that you can um, encounter before you get into this green business. And these barriers can have all types of reasons. Um, I put the psychological barriers in green because that's my research focus, uh, but there are a lot of uh, barriers. And for instance, if you, if you look at um, uh, another example, so maybe not a sustainable business, but people who want to um, have a more sustainable house, you can think of barriers uh, of money. Money is always a very important barrier that we see in research. Um, but it can also be technological barriers or barriers, uh, for instance, in the characteristics of your, of your house. You, you, can't, you might want to buy solar panels, but if you don't have a roof of yourself because you have an apartment, that's a barrier. Uh, then your, so your intentions and your motivation and your knowledge can all be good. You, you know that you want to become more sustainable. You know how to do it and you have a positive attitude towards that. And maybe you st also have enough money to buy it. And uh, maybe you also have a roof. But then still, it could be that uh, there are other barriers that, that uh, withhold you to, uh, to become as green as you want. Um, so there are a lot of barriers. And if we zoom into these psychological barriers, which, of course, I think are the most interesting, you can see that there are a lot of mechanisms that can play a role uh, that stand between you and your green goal whatever that is, uh, green business or green house or, or whatever. And these psychological mechanisms are very interesting. And I once did this overview of famous people uh, who have uh, done a lot of research uh, and a lot of knowledge uh, gaining for, the, for psychology as a scientific discipline. Uh, we see that a lot of these things, these mechanisms, which, which are universal for a lot of behavior explaining, um, uh, that they could play a role. So uh, motivation is, an, of course, an important role if it becomes to if, it, if we talk about green behavior. Uh, you can think about emotions. People might be uh, fearing the future. This, you, you might be uh, led by fear. Uh, values is a very important one. The worldview that you have, uh, the value that you place on the world. Um, I also put myself on this slide, uh, which is a bit arrogant before because I put myself between Freud and, uh, and other famous people. Sorry for that. But uh, I, I wanted to include my own research because the type of research that I do is I look into uh, hassle and habits. So I I, I'm looking for the, uh, the psychological barrier that, for instance, hassle can be. And hassle is uh, like all the micro stressors and frustration that you come into when you want to become more green. 
And if it's about a house, for instance, you can think about uh, filling out uh, subsidy forms, uh, finding a contractor, uh, the mess in your house once you are, uh, um, for instance, having the contractors into your house. All these small micro stressors, if you add them up, it can be, uh, become things for people to not do the green behavior that they actually want. Um, habit is also a strong one. And um, that could be that you are used to behave in a certain way and that it's very difficult to change your behavior. I, I put uh, some uh, examples here on the, on the slide um, to show how this works, the, 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 the thoughts that people can have when it comes to uh, becoming more green. And the, the examples that I put here in is more for, I think, the, the companies or the organizations that want to become more sustainable than they are now. Uh, and not as much for you who have started already as green. So it can be, if you look at habits, uh, that people find it difficult to do their work differently. They, ha they are used to a certain way. Uh, we actually did some research uh, two years ago on uh, conser conservatism in the building sector, and we found that a lot of people working in real estate, they are very used to the old uh, ways how they do it. They know the materials, they know how to work, and uh, they find it very hard to find new um, uh, materials and new people to work with, because they you know what you have, and that's a certainty, and they feel safe with that. And going uh, to work with new people or with new materials is maybe scary, and also maybe you don't trust that as a company. And I think that's also important for you, because you make uh, all these nice new technologies and maybe new products that you want to sell outside to the world. Uh, but take into account that it on the other side, people who, uh, uh, who you want to buy your product, they might be conservative in that sense. So it also takes maybe some effort to, to get people to buy your stuff. Um, the hassle factor, which is my, my pet project, my pet research practice, uh, is about um, that it takes so much effort and time to change your habits and to become more green. Uh, the example that I gave, the subsidies, the rules, regulations, especially uh, um, nowadays, technology uh, evolves so quickly that sometimes regulations fall behind. And then uh, you can have the problem of not getting into, uh, into the right uh, way to do it and to get your business going. Um, I will not uh, uh, mention them all. You can probably read them. Um, but these are all psychological mechanisms, and these are often unconscious processes that play a role why people, even when they want to become more sustainable and when they are motivated and they know what to do and also have enough money, can still uh, not be as green as you want. And then you come into the next problem, because if you want to become green and you are not, you have this tension in your head that your behavior and your thoughts are not in line. And uh, that's called cognitive dissonance. You probably have heard about it. And what people automatically try to do is to reduce this tension. So you even either have to change your behavior or change your thoughts. But this is a very difficult situation to be in. And a lot of these psychological mechanisms are very unconscious, so you probably don't notice besides that you feel this tension and don't feel at ease. And uh, an example of this, what is completely unrelated to where we are here for today, is for instance smoking. A lot of people know that they should stop smoking, they know it's bad for them, but it's very hard to stop, so you still smoke and you don't want it, and then you have this tension. And a lot of people who smoke then are not going to change their behavior, but their thoughts, and then they say, okay, my grandmother, she became 99 and she smoked whole days, and she's not dead yet, so well, how could it be so bad? And these are these... Uh, um, uh, yeah, things that you can say to yourself, which are maybe not that rational, but they are functional. So, I, uh, as I promised, I will also start, uh, or I will also end more motivating than be demotivating, uh, because these barriers can also be overcome, and especially um, not all of them, of course, because overcoming psychological barriers is difficult. Um, but some of them are are easily to overcome, and I think. What I wanted to uh, uh, give you today is some of these reflections on um, at least be aware of the fact that there are psychological barriers. I think that was my number one uh, um, purpose for today. Please think about it. Don't uh, only think about technology and money. Also think about this whole world of psychology that plays a role uh, when you are innovating. Um, be aware that there are barriers and also try to map them for yourself. I think the m one of the most important things to do is that you know um, that you have to make a journey, that you are starting somewhere and you want to end there, and there are a lot of stops that you have to take, and that's a, it's a long journey. And the barriers that you come 
uh, path in this journey might be very difficult, different. So there might be uh, financial, there might be technological, regulations can change. Um, you might uh, find difficulties with trusting people or having people to buy your product, uh, which also might be psychological. Try to map this, so try to really visualize your, your journey with the stops and the barriers and try to tackle those barriers one by one instead of looking at it, at it as a giant mountain of issues and problems that you get. So going through that journey visualize the stops and the barriers. Don't be afraid to ask for help because uh, everyone uh, encounters barriers and there are people out there who will help you. Uh, and try to, to tackle that and, and go along. And we also know from research that uh, being green actually makes, happy, makes, makes you happy. So um, uh, it is something that is good. And uh, al although there might be a lot of stuff and obstacles that you might come along with, uh, try to remember that too, that it's, it's it's making you happy and, and you know also that the, the purpose is good in the end. So be aware of the barriers and try to tackle them. That would be two of my takeaways. And I guess that brings me to the end of my presentation. I have some slides with some references. If you read, want to read more about this, there's a lot out there. Um, but you can also contact me. So I have some contact uh, details here. Um, and I think that's the end of my presentation. Yeah. <laughs> I try to track time, but I'm not sure what the, the time means anymore. So. I think we still have some yeah? time for some <laughs> questions. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Ah, there's one coming in. How do you distinguish between mental load and micro stressors slash hassle? Ah, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I think also it's a semantic question. Uh, okay. uh, mental load m and stress and micro stressors or hassles can all be the same, I think. So mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, indeed the, the load that you feel mentally. Uh, and it actually, it, I, I like the question because it uh, gives me the opportunity to stress out that hassle is a perception. So it's yeah. not like an objective thing that you can measure. You, you, well, of course, we try to do it because we work at the University of Technology <laughs> and we want to quantify everything. <laughs> so I try to quantify hassle, but it's really difficult to quantify hassle for, for another person. So you always have to see for yourself how much hassle do I perceive. Yeah. So actually, I think my, my boyfriend, for instance, is more, more hassle sensitive than I am. Okay. So if we... If we uh, discuss those kinds of things. We, we for instance, wanted to uh, make our house more sustainable. Yeah. And at that moment, if we try to find that out, I see, okay, uh, my, my patience maybe is better. I have more time to find it out. But of course, it's my job. Yeah. And, yeah. and he gets annoyed after uh, 15 minutes looking for subsidy rules in the Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, that could, can be very frustrating. Um, so yeah, nice okay. question. Thank is you. there like a difference in, 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 in approach when you look at hassle or like like real stressful events in how coping with it? Um, now we are just looking into that now because the hassle is a stress factor yeah. according to theory. Um, but my wish for the next year would be to uh, uh, really uh, measure it with stress measures. So you can you, you, can you can you can you can have you can measure stress <laughs> levels with sweat, for instance. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we can also instigate stress. Uh, you can uh, have yeah, you have all these cortisol tests. Yeah. It's a bit technical, maybe, yeah. but you can actually experiment with that. And then, yeah, my wish would be to to have a couple of people behind computers and let them find out for instance, subsidy rules, and, and uh, assess their stress levels and see if they're really more stressful than... Uh, we could also not. do it with all the pitches, like see yeah. <laughs> whether... <laughs> yeah, we need more equipment, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so uh, we don't okay. have it now. Okay. But okay. Maybe, do maybe you also later. look at the neuro part? Uh, not yet, that could be something for the future, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. for yeah. now, we started with this whole hassle factor research uh, on a theoretical basis, and uh, students are now starting to actually measure it. We have a choice experiment done uh, okay. where we wanted to see how much uh, people are willing to pay to uh, pay off hassle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can think of uh, being completely... Um, de-hassled, is that a word? <laughs> Unzorgd in <Yeah>. Dutch? <laughs> um, so we, we thought, uh, uh, how much would, for instance, people? this is not part of the research, but that would be my question, how much are, are people willing to pay for a complete renovation of their house? Yeah. So do you, for instance, want to pay 5,000 euros, give your, give your key keys to someone, you go on holiday, come yeah. back, and your house is completely 
Uh, well, that's not 5,000 euros, that would be 20,000 yeah. euros. Yeah. But you pay five euros. for the hassle-free five, experience. Five probably. for the hassle-free. <laughs> <laughs> 5,000 for the hassle free experience. I would, I would sign here. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I know that's for materials and yeah. depending on the renovation, it becomes yeah. a lot of more money. But then yeah. what the, the we, we are trying to quantify indeed uh, how much de hassling costs. What, uh, uh, what I also found interesting recently, I read about like um, perceiving stress because she said also like it's about perception mm -hmm. and that stress is not per se a negative thing. Because you yeah. can perceive it as something positive that can motivate you. Yeah. When you have to pitch your, your startup, you feel like, oh, but you are more and more keen on delivering the right message. You're more eager, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, there's a, but there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a, a tipping point. There's a tipping point. Yeah. Okay. So if you are well prepared or yeah. an expert in something, yeah. then stress is good. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not prepared, uh, then it's not good. Then it's really uh, yeah, bringing you down. So yeah. that's, that's in indeed it's a fine line. It's and a it fine depends line. on the person. Uh, yeah, but Perceiving also, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, of course, that's that. It all it's also stress sensitivity is something something personal. But with the if you pitch all the time, so for you guys, if you do that all the time, and you have done it ten or twenty times, it becomes easier and less stressful. Yeah. But well, we know public speaking in itself is stressful. But if you do it a lot of times, then then your body also gets used to that. So that's. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes easier over okay. time. So yep. stress per se is not ne it's negative. It's not per se negative. Thing. No. Okay. No. That's good. Let's see if there's more questions. Yes. Some people don't believe that my invention is a green technology. How do I facilitate this <laughs> barrier? Oh, this um, uh, this this that's this has a barrier from the other person. <laughs> this yeah, but it is also has like a lobby thing yeah, under yeah, yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. So um it's of course very difficult to answer this without knowing what the invention is. Because <laughs> please write in the uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? I, I, I have a lot of questions. Oh. Why don't people believe that your invention is a green technology? But imagine, uh, uh, we can maybe do like a little role play. I will be uh, whatever organization uh, could this be? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, um, I can maybe say something about greenwashing I because in general, okay. that, that's, is that yeah. okay? Is yeah. that a thing to yeah. do? Because um, th that is an issue, and we also do research on that. And especially with uh, um, companies that have from origin a dirty image, yeah. um, it is very difficult to to get this going on and say that you are having a real green uh, technology. Yeah, because people expect from certain uh, businesses that they are not um, really green. Yeah. So they think that it might be uh, manipulation or that they are greenwashing, that they're pretending to be more green than they actually are yeah. to make a profit and to sell their product. Yeah. So And that we, we know also from research is, a, uh, is, is really a bad thing happening because if people perceive that you are not fair or not yeah. honest you even stress it more by saying like one little thing we're doing here yeah, is yeah, yeah. more sustainable than that basically intrinsic intrinsically says like all the other is bad stuff yeah 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 and what what is really what you really should do is point out what is green and not green about your technology yeah so we found that 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 uh, even um uh, the the organizations that have uh yeah energies or technologies that are partly maybe uh, not so green mm -hmm. that if they only promote the green part of it, yeah. people uh, have a, an, a question in their head and they say, okay, what is it really so green? Yeah. Or is there something that they don't tell us because they want to make money with it? So probably they are not as green as that is. So it's better to be very honest yeah. as uh, a company about what is green and what not. What are the benefits and the... So uh, then they come with a roadmap and say like, well, in one generation we will be fully fossil free, for instance. Yeah. Like, how would we perceive that? Yeah, I, th I think it's all about uh, being very honest and transparent about what the product gives or not. And, yeah. and also, uh, um, don't try to hide the things that might not, not be clear be. yet yeah. or uh, yeah. that are might yeah. not be so green. Because yeah. uh, it's better to be honest um, and, and that, that, that you have people that really believe you and that and, and find you credible than that you build up this fluffy story and... Yeah. Um, yeah, and maybe also you open the doors for people with great ideas to, like, if you're honest about yeah. what challenges you're working on, then startups like the ones yeah. participating today can maybe also provide a solution for yeah, a specific definitely. element. Yeah, yeah, it, it comes back from all, all types of research that companies need to be uh, credible, uh, honest about the pros and the cons of their product. And also simple in their words about what they do. Don't fluff it up too much. And, and for instance, because the question triggered me, I would have a startup that wants to um, 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 
market a very sustainable energy solution, mm -hmm. uh, generation, energy gen generation. And then you have all the lobbies of the big firms that might like sort of question your credibility because you're small or yeah. whatever. How can you cope with that? Is it like, do you have to hold like a technical um, um, play doy, what is the yeah, word, yeah, like yeah. a, a argue speech or yeah. argue, or is it like how how can you sort of relate? Because sometimes it's more emotional type of um, uh, barriers that might yeah. be like. Uh, uh yeah, it's it, I think it really depends on uh, who you're talking with. I, yeah. I, I would say that because it's, uh, some people yeah. might be interesting more in the techno technological uh, story behind it. Yeah. Others might be m more interested in the marketing story, and yeah. other might be interested in the fact that you. Yeah, just an honest, uh, uh, maybe also very intrinsically motivated person that wants to better the world. Yeah. But that that could be, but maybe not sometimes that uh, that works for all companies and all pitches. So what will be in our toolkit? We have like a, the technological the type of uh, uh, arguing. Yeah. We have the emotional type of yeah. response. What what other tools do financial? we have to financial? <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. to have a good story. Calculating. Yeah, yeah, and also your m marketing, of course. I think uh, th yeah. that that should all be part of it. But yeah, I think, but that's maybe from my type of research that honesty and credibility yeah. is always the most important. Yeah. So yeah. be yourself, and especially, uh, yeah, it it might be very competitive, and I know that a lot of some people might might need to pitch, of course. But yeah. uh, authentic authenticity uh, is really a strong uh, influencer. Oh, I so love it that you say that. Yeah, because th that's what I encountered as well, and 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 uh, there will be a lot of technical. Uh, people probably also because yeah. it's like all clean tech solutions and that, that, that. But we also need to like have this human perspective and it's yeah. like an honest story from, yeah, from inside out. Yeah, and especially if you are young and you or, or, or you it's your first business and you might be insecure, but it's not uh, it's not, not not a bad thing. You can show that if your story is good and you are motivated, yeah. then yeah, show it. It's it's also my approach to yeah. to try to be. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's very good. There's another question. Yeah. Are there barriers that are culturally specific? Hmm. Good um, question. We have like all regions uh, here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think many of the psychological barriers that we research are not really culturally specific. I think maybe how they come out or how they are experienced might be different depending on your, maybe not your culture, but also your personality or your upbringing or the, the field that you work in. So um, uh, the general biases and uh, the, the, uh, the, the strongness of habits, etc. these are researched all over the world and are strong human things. Um, the hassle factor we just started uh, to yeah. research, so maybe that's a good uh, research uh, idea that we do ah. research on. Cultural. How maybe maybe uh, the south of Europe will be less hassle uh, for instance, oriented, and or maybe likes a bit of chaos instead of the the Netherlands and Germany. Who yeah, are like yeah, <laughs> that ca it could be. Or the more that you uh, the the closer that you live together, or something could yeah. also uh, be maybe f uh, perceived as more stressful or something. That you yeah, don't know. Good idea. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Ah, there's another question. What is your favorite nudge to change behavior? Do you have an example? Yeah, I have an Ooh. example. Uh, if we talk about green behavior, I think the, the my favorite nudges are the technical nudges, um, such as my eco default setting on uh, my laundry machine, uh, which is uh, a very good nudge because it's very simple. I bought this new was uh, laundry machine, and the eco setting is the default. So the, that's the, the, the most environmentally friendly uh, uh, program. Yeah, uh, and that's if you start if you press start, that's the that's the, the default. The default. So you actually have to do something more to have ah, a to take it off the uh, most yeah, uh, to, to have a option. not green uh, program uh, which is a hassle factor so you actually uh, create hassle <sighs> for the unwanted behavior so hassle can also be used for behavior that that is not green uh, oh and nice. uh, so the, the e and of course the the uh, shower timer yeah it's a very good one. So there are a lot of small nudges, and often I like the, the small cheap nudges. Yeah. So the, 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 the three euro, uh, or maybe that's also more expensive because my... my <laughs> well, <laughs> my like, an, like, a, like a, you mean like a zandloper, like yeah, a timer yeah, on yeah, the... Yeah, in yeah. The, yeah. yeah, yeah you know, uh, these kinds of nudges yeah. uh, really help well. And, and, and uh, yeah, my, my favorite nudges are nudge of the future would be like, uh, I'm talking about subsidy forms. Yeah. And they can yeah. be very complicated. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, that they are like uh, pre-completed, yes. like tax forms. That's yes. uh, in the Netherlands, the, the audience, of course, not only Netherlands, but 
we have these pre-completed uh, text forms that really have a lot of information already about you that yes. helps you. I would like to have that also for subsidies. So for yeah, so today we have like pitches and we want to win something. We are all winners, of course. But there's also this element of, of serious gaming that might mm -hmm. also play a part. Is that also something that you research? Uh, on how not yet. There are some um, uh, PhD students who f uh, of mine who are uh, who want to do that and yeah. who want to take that uh, into their uh, um, research schemes. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not really my uh, my field yeah, yet. But we know that gamification yeah. uh, really helps uh, uh, to change behavior because people uh, like to have fun and to play, to collect things, and these can all help with green behavior. Yeah, yeah. I heard about the uh, uh, University of Utrecht who d who created this game, and you would have, for instance, your uh, a washing machine, and then it would be sick, and you could make it healthy again oh, okay, by yeah. by lowering, for instance, the uh, the temperature, yeah. and you would only gain points if you would do it at home. And by by doing all these different challenges, uh, the the like behavioral change afterwards was even higher than during the the okay. game that lasted three weeks. So it was like thirty percent of energy reduction because of a game. And I was like, we have to play more games. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, and, and people like so that. Like people like Fitbits and and smartphones yeah. and collecting oh points. I'm so part uh, of it. <laughs> oh <yeah>. gosh. <laughs> okay, one uh, last uh, question: yeah. How can we motivate people to get more green? How can we make things cool as Tesla? Yeah, you talk about marketing already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Simple, simpleness. Uh, what I said, you have to make things uh, easy for people to motivate them to get more green, especially if it's um, not intrinsically motivated behavior that you want from others. Yeah. Uh, so that could be one. And yeah, make it fun, make it easy, make it. Um, uh, Yet timely also, you have to see directly maybe what you do. That's also something that comes out of uh, research. But it really depends. It's, it's, it's a very general question. It really yeah. depends the on your product. And the yeah. yeah. The, what is your target group? Um, is it children or is it uh, uh, older people or is it students? So you can you can uh, yeah motivate students with beer, <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, maybe not children. Uh, but, but you can you can choose for your audience um, what to how what who you motivate. And and psychology has a lot of knowledge about this. And we all yeah. always say so. We also lo work a lot with policymakers that it's not uh, IKEA. It's not a one size fits all. You really have to target. What, what is the behavior you want? What's the behavior yeah. you don't want? Is it a behavior change or new behavior? What's your target group? Um, Oh, yeah, but it's really this is like really interesting for all of us, I think, because yeah. I, I I started industrial design here in Delft, and um, I think that the advertisement type, like and, and the, the marketing around it, we we use it to create all these images. Why everyone started smoking? Why like all yeah. these different types of behavior? We we could use the same power to yeah. like, like to scale and to like boost really all these innovative good yeah yeah stories. Definitely, we're working so hard to to identify all these. Uh, points, but very good questions uh, yeah. because this is where where it goes. Yeah, this is the heart of the research we do. Ah, yeah. amazing! So we will definitely follow you in all the research that you're going to do. I hope so. If you have something from us, like if we can help you in your uh, studies, you let us know. Yeah, because I think also. we all love to join, and and I think this is like a very uh, uh, beautiful add on 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 only the technological perspective that we have because of course it's it's clean tech today but there is also this 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 human yeah. behavior and i really love the the authenticity that you stress today so i think we will all take that with us thank you very home. much thank you so much okay <laughs>